What's up guys, Ed here back with another video. Uh, today we're going to do a deck profile. This uh, this was sort of a, a deck that I kind of made with uh, the uh, starter the starter set and a couple of packs in the gacha box that I had gotten. Uh, so if you're uh, just kind of like wanting to just splash things together, I'll show you what kind of deck you are able to build. And it may not be the most like top meta deck, but it is something that you can kind of like build and be able to you know get in and play with people uh just by getting a few packs and a starter set to uh you know play with your friends and and uh basically kick their ass so uh first of all this is one of two deck profiles this is a control deck that i built sort of kinda and the other deck is a sort of like aggro like uh i'm gonna slap you and be aggressive uh it's mono fire that's going to be another video but this this deck is control it is uh, fire, fire, oh my god, water, dark, nature, uh, control, and you'll see why, uh, it's those elements specifically. So, let's get into this. Also, look at my Lapras sleeves. They're so pretty. All right. Oh, dang, I'm sorry. All right, so, we are going to start off with four Dread Skull Leviathans. Uh, you could say this is the master soul of the deck, kind of like, uh, your boss monster, uh, if, if you were playing Yu-Gi-Oh!, uh, he is a vanilla, yes, but the thing about Oversoul is that sometimes it's always the vanillas that get you. The cool thing about him, he is a 6 cost, 700 power, 2 hitter. And that's that's really good. Uh, because uh, most 2 hitters, you gotta, if, unless you're Red Flame Dragon, you're not really going to have a 2 hitter. So this is a pretty early 2 hitter. Most 2 hitters are level 7 or higher. Uh, and also, uh, because he's, uh, he has 700 power, it's uh, really easy to remove stuff, uh, either by beating them over or by other cards, which you'll see later. Uh, but yeah, he's uh, pretty cool. He's pretty important for this deck. Uh, and really, the end game of him is sort of like, uh, you at least with your board state, you kind of want at least one. The rest of them can be in the graveyard, and I'm going to show you why. Uh, one of the, But I'll tell you quickly is that water kind of has like a graveyard strategy to it. Very different than from other card games, which water is mostly draw power and scrying and all that type of stuff. We have three copies of Shell Defender. Now, Shell Defender is pretty cool. Uh, it is a blocker, or uh, in this case, it has shield. Uh, shield in, uh, in this game basically means you can block attacks. You can't really block attacks with all willy-nilly with any creature. They have to have the keyword shield. Shell Defender cannot attack, but it's a pretty good wall uh, for your opponent to have to deal with because it's a uh, 300 power uh, f for three uh, three resource so it, it will stop uh, 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 most of their small stuff which in oversoul you do end up with a lot of small cards on the board uh, which is kind of why in the game there's a lot of uh, low power low level removal to kind of deal with that next we have uh, blood moon tengu Blood Moon Tango is just a vanilla, but it's a the smallest thing you can get to. It's the cheapest thing that you can get to get to 600 power on a soul. Uh, it is a vanilla. It's level 5. It's a one-hitter, but the power is what helps it. Uh, it's very hard for your opponent to kind of beat over because if you have a good board presence, they're going to kind of want to try to get rid of your creatures. But this guy's kind of big, so it's a little difficult for them. And he is dark. Uh, <clears throat> kind of helps with the strategy. Of what you're doing because you kind of need dark mana and plus you know you just, you want you want to be durable <laughs> next we're getting into nature we have uh two copies of mama cluck mama cluck is a really really good card uh for some decks that need it not all decks need it but pretty much uh when you're being attacked in oversoul you have the option to either take the damage or discard cards from your deck in order to uh mitigate the damage that you would take so in the case let's say i'm getting attacked for two hit I can discard either one card to take one damage or two cards to reduce all of it. And what Mama Clock does is that when she is used to reduce, you can sort of search, search your deck for a copy of her and add her to your soul gauge, which is like your mana zone in Oversoul. It's really cool. It helps you ramp when you're not really focused on wanting to play ramp cards. And it's, it's just really, really interesting. Uh, she's a level five, so it's like... Uh, you kind of don't want to play her like i don't know she's she's a level five for 350 power which isn't really like the best for that level but at the same time uh if you have let's say you're in a position where you have mama cluck and you have no more in the deck 
then you know you just drop her or just reduce with her or whatever. Next we have uh, Specter Whale Violent Masoki. I don't know how to how do you say that word, but this uh, this little dude is a uh, is a water card. It's a uh, you run two of um, for this build uh, for this deck. Uh, basically, it's a it's a one hitter level six water with six hundred power and <sighs> stat wise, it's not the best. Uh, it's level six. It's six hundred power, which is pretty low uh, for a level six if it's not a vanilla. Uh, so it's it's kind of weaker in that regard to uh, Dread Skull Leviathan, but its ability makes up for it. Uh, what it does is that once per turn, it's an act ability, and uh, <clears throat> and Oversoul act abilities are abilities that can be activated only during your main phase and only if the creature is or the soul is uh, refreshed, and so. You kind of don't want to really attack with this card that often because uh, what it does is you can uh, banish. Uh, in this game, it's called Forget. In other games, it's called Banish or Exile. Uh, you can forget a number of cards uh, from your uh, from your uh, graveyard, and if you do, you can target a, a soul your opponent controls whose level is equal to or lower than the number of uh, cards you forgot, and you can uh, bounce it back to the player's hand. And it's pretty good removal. Uh, it's not the strongest, but it does uh, disrupt the opponent quite a bit. Uh, especially since they would uh, have to pay the full price of that card again. Uh, in case, you know, like they had other things planned. Next, uh, we have our uh, one ofs uh, for the souls in this deck. We have uh, Cursed Oni Mask. And we have Black Mage Puppet. Now these cards are pretty cool because uh, if uh, they have uh, destruction ability, so like when they uh, are destroyed, they trigger things. So we'll start with Cursed Oni Mask. Cursed Oni Mask is a level three dark soul. Uh, it has one hit, 300 power. And the thing with this card is that when it is destroyed, you get to add it to a soul's uh, chain, either your own soul or your opponent's soul. While it is attached to that soul, that soul cannot attack at all. So it locks that soul from attacking for the rest of the game or unless they have a way to get rid of it or something. Your best bet is to pick something that cannot release. So in this game, there's a thing where you can absorb cards, which is adding cards to and attaching them to a soul or a spell, or you can and, and, and releasing, which is basically detaching cards from another card. So if there's a soul that your opponent controls that has a... Uh, a release ability, it's not really the best target for this card. As for Black Mage Puppet, the way that Black Mage Puppet works is that uh, when it's destroyed, your opponent basically discards one card. They get to choose, but they discard a card. And uh, hand size is very important in this game. All right, those are the souls. Now we're going to get on to the spells. So first, we're going to start out with Call of Leviathan. Now, the way that this deck works is you uh, have to forget one card from your graveyard in order to search out a Leviathan from your deck and add it to hand. This is really good because you can search your deck for the well or you can search out for Dread Skull Leviathan. So it helps you get your uh, your hard hitter or the removal or whatever it is that you want to do for, these, for, for Leviathan shenanigans. This card really helps you. Next, uh... We have Psychic Disruption, a form of removal. By the way, uh, the Leviathan spell is level 3 water. Uh, Psychic Disruption is a level 3 water as well. Uh, what this card does is basically you can forget one soul from your graveyard. And when you, if you do destroy a soul, your opponent controls with power less than or equal to the soul that was forgotten this way. And you can only play one Psychic Disruption per turn. Uh, which is kind of the, one of the reasons why you would want only one of your Dread Skull Leviathans on the field and some in the graveyard so that you can play cards like this and get rid of stuff that are 700 power or 600, 500. It just makes it easier. Next, we have two Fairy Bumps. Uh, so Fairy Bump is a level 4 nature spell. And this is like, you know, your low power, low level removal. And it sort of like forces any level, uh, any souls with 300 or power your opponent controls back into their soul gauge so yes your opponent gets a resource off of it but it still helps with uh removal and it clears up their board so it's a 
not bad. I think it's a fair trade, especially for something that, you know, you're just building a lot of cards, putting cards together and trying to make a quick deck. It's not that bad of, of a removal. Next, you have two Creeping Darkness. Creeping Darkness, if you're running dark, is a must-have because it is level 4, so it doesn't really go off until turn 4, but it uh, reduces your opponent's souls to uh, by 300. Uh, so, it really, it can kill a lot of things uh, or just weaken things enough to where you can only play one Creeping Darkness and then slap uh, a opponent's soul with your soul. And it's it's just really good. Like, two Creeping Darknesses reduces 600, one reduces three. If you had three of them, you know, 900. It's, it's just a really, really good card. Darkness has a lot of interesting tools uh, that you can play around with. And I would say that it's probably one of the strongest elements. Next, we have one copy of Exactment, uh, which is a level six water, I mean, <laughs> level six in nature, I'm sorry. And uh, pretty much what it does is you choose a soul you control, then uh, send target soul your opponent controls with power less than it into their soul gauge. So rather than less than or equal to, like most cards, this one just requires, it requires that the card needs to be weaker so that you can just send it straight back into their soul gauge. And uh, it's, it's another way to kind of get rid of uh, uh, stronger things, you know, higher power things. Uh, and it, it, it can be funny. <laughs> I only run one mostly because I only found that one is enough. I could be wrong. Somebody could probably make a deck where they run two or three. But for me personally, I think it's really cool to just run at one, um, especially you have a Dreadskull Leviathan. Uh, or whatever big boy you have or small boy yeah it's it's, it's, it's pretty cool next is uh, a card created by what some uh, members of the community call mama mango she's my mother and she plays demir mill so i was like hey mom why don't you create a card so she made mill uh <laughs> gaze before the flood is a level five water snowman blessing uh so it's archetype is snowman <clears throat> the way that uh the spell works uh blessings work are kind of like enchantments where you play the card and it stays on the board until it is removed by some sort of way so the way that gaze bef <laughs> so the way that gaze before the flood works is that when you play it it stays on the board for uh two of your draw phases and on the second draw phase it is destroyed and when it's destroyed by its own ability you can mill the opponent for five cards uh which can actually mess them up or kind of help them uh, i've had situations where it really messes up my opponent because they lose triggers uh because this game does use uh triggers uh sort of like vanguard or dual masters uh but it sort of forces my opponent to uh either lose triggers or <laughs> get sort of lose all their important like attackers and all that stuff but at, at the end of the day they end up getting triggers <laughs> it's just like yeah it, it's weird uh but i only run one uh it can help sometimes it just it backfires but it, it's a fun card next we have uh triggers so uh oversoul for some of you who don't know uh uses the sort of damage system the same as vanguard where you uh flip the top card of your deck and then add it to a damage zone right here so uh you would want triggers to help with your deck now triggers they are optional you don't have to run them um i've had players who would run maybe four triggers or no triggers at all and sometimes your decks just work really really well but the way that the the rulings for triggers are is that you can have 12 uh among those 12 uh, you can only have up to eight car eight souls with the trigger icon uh which you'll see right here not sure if it's focusing there you go so the way that soul triggers uh work is that when you reveal a card uh soul that has the uh trigger icon that means that you can summon that soul for free so it sort of it heals you and you get a free body which is why there's a lot of low level s destruction not saying that you know rush decks aren't a viable thing because they do exist and when they pop off they pop off but it, it just helps uh and then with spells you know you activate the ability of the spell trigger and then it but it still goes to your damage zone but uh yeah let's go ahead and uh show you my triggers so i run uh seven soul triggers i run four stalker frogs and 
three abyssal slugs the thing about soul trigger is that most of them are level one so if you need low level creatures in your deck uh you can just run them as triggers so you either get them for free through damage or you can just summon them and they don't take too much to summon so yeah i have seven heals which is uh my four uh my i mean my seven soul triggers and uh that's all i run for the soul triggers usually you can run eight that's the max but seven just works for this deck my other trigger i run uh four carolella stars uh so by the way the spells they can be just played normally as a spell or you know for free through triggers uh the way that carolella star works is that uh when you play it you get to draw two cards but then you discard one card and this helps you get cards into the graveyard for what water kind of does now there's not a lot of like stuff that kind of messes with graveyard in this deck there are a few like uh the well or psychic disruption uh but there are other decks that can you know do stupid stuff with the graveyard such as frogs you know always getting back frogs feeding their boss a monster or their master soul and it's really really cool carolella star really really helps with it because it not only makes you dig through your deck deeper but also do your graveyard shenanigans by adding cards to the graveyard and then the last card that i have for a trigger my 12th trigger is nature's gift uh, nature tends to uh, be very, very consistent. You know, it helps you ramp, sort of uh, forces creatures to battle or just like have like a head on effect and compares creatures, like for example, Exactment uh, and stuff like that. Uh, so, uh, what nature uh, Nature's Gift does is uh, you add a card from your Soul Gauge to your hand uh, and then add the top card of your deck to the Soul Gauge. Uh, there's only one. So it's like if you get it, you want to make sure you spend it on something you really, really want. Um, I have more, but I only need one for this deck because uh, uh, I'm not going too crazy with some of the stuff that are in this deck. You know, like in other decks where you kind of want to be super, super freaking consistent. It's, it's a really great card, but for this deck, it's, you know, one is good enough. Yeah, I don't know why I felt like I just speed rushed through this thing. Oh yeah, this video is 23 uh, minutes long. Wow. Okay, so there's going to be a lot of cutting. Uh, so this is uh, my sort of dark water nature sort of controly ish deck. Uh, I don't know if you would call it control. Kind of like control. Kind of tempo. Uh, as you can see, some of these have the foils, which you can get in the uh, Oversoul Gotcha box for set one. It is on sale on the Game Crafter if anyone's interested. Uh, and I'll put a link in the description for you guys to check that out. So, uh, yeah. Thank you all for watching. And I hope that you all have a fantastic day. Peace.